Welcome Lions. Welcome District 19 G Lions. What a great day for a conference, huh? We know what it takes. It takes Lions to do just about anything. And we're here today to celebrate the 58th year of District 19 G Lions. A big shout out to the Lions. I know I can't hear you, everybody's muted, but that's the way it goes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Immediate Past Council Chair J.D. Neller and a very proud member of the Vancouver Lions Club and of District 19G Lions. It's great to see everybody. It's good to see a turnout and, uh, and another spring conference for all of us. I'll be hosting today's festivities. You've all seen the rules as you checked into the conference. Uh, basically, it's very simple. Um, the term go mute yourself has now become a part of the English language, an acceptable part of the English language. So we want everybody to be muted during most of this. If you have something you need to say or you need to, you have a question, please use the chat box. We have people monitoring that and we'll try to get to you as quickly as we can. Uh, please put your names in the image boxes as well so we all know where you are. And with that, I think we should get ready and go ahead and proceed to our conference. So let's start things off with our anthems, and I would like to introduce Marilyn Patterson, our first Vice District Governor. Canada, to honor our Canadian citizens. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. And now, the singing of America to honor our USA citizens. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. And for the second half of Team Patterson, past District Governor Steve Patterson from the Longview Pioneer Lions Club. How about an invocation, Steve? Uh, welcome to you all, Lions. Uh, to each of you in your own way, let us pray. Thank you for allowing us to gather this weekend for fun, fellowship, learning, memorial, and awarding. We honor two district governors from G, Steve Stottinger from 2019 and 2020, and current governor Doug Harvey, 2020 to 2021. May our actions be pleasing to you and increase our love for you and for each other. Amen. Thank you, District Governor, Passage of Governor Steve. We have a number of people visiting us today which need introductions. And we are here today, I, I want to echo Steve's uh, invocation, we are here today to honor both past district, both past district Governor Steve Steidinger and our current District Governor, uh, Doug Harvey. Um, but we have a number of introductions to make, so I'm going to go through the list. It's a fairly long list, and let's hope I don't miss anybody. hope we have the list in my head. So first, our international director, our current international director from the Chilliwack 
area up at the Chilwick Mount Chiam Lions Club, Alan Hunt. Alan, wave to everybody. And uh, our international guest who will be visiting us later today uh, and be introduced more thoroughly later today, Larry Edwards from Pennsylvania. I know he's around here somewhere. Current council chair, Al Hedstrom from the Silverdale Sunrise Lions Club. Now there's Larry. Hi, <laughs> Larry. Council Chair Al Hedstrom, and as long as I'm on the council chair, John Morilek, our vice council chair from the Langley, Langley British Columbia and the Surrey Central Lions Club. Our seated district governor, Doug Harvey. There you go, Doug. Good to see you. From District 19I, current seated district governor, Jane Beddoes. From District 19F, seated District Governor, Ray Fujara. Hi, Ray, how you doing? District 19E's current District Governor, Peggy Harriman. District 19G's current Vice District Governor, Marilyn Patterson, who we've already been introduced to. Wave, Marilyn. And our second Vice District Governor, Debbie Mansell. Current seated uh, First Vice District Governor and now District Governor-elect from District 19D, Joyce Stevens. And from District 19B, current seated First Vice District Governor and District Governor-elect, Tom Smarsh. Hey, Tom. Multiple District 19's Executive Director, Peter Anderson is in the house. Current Zone Chairs, Ken Botero from District 19 G1. <laughs> Leslie Chassie from District 19 G6. And Ron Maddy from District 19 G3. Now on to our pasts. First, our past international director, our immediate past international director from District Mobile District 19, Don Shove up in Mount Vernon. And Ann Smarsh, I understand, is in the house as well. Past international director Ann. Wave. Couple of past council chairs, Hal Palmer from District 19G. And Polly Voon from Lynn Valley Lions up in District 19A. Wave, Patty, wave, pound. <laughs> district Governor Steve Stottinger, the immediate past district governor of District 19G2, of, of G2. And next in line from 2018 to 2019, Dr. Mark Manzel, past district governor from District 19G. 2016-17, past district governor Monty Ward from the Kalama Lions and district. 2013 to 2014, district 19G from the zone one, St Steve Patterson. 2010-2011, past district governor Terry Sutphin. And immediately before Terry, it was 2009 to 2010. We also have past sister governor Mark Kelsch. 2000. And Doug Hall, 2004 to 2005, past sister governor Doug from District G. And way back now, we have past district governor Mike Parker from 1997 to 1998. And way on the east side of the state, actually, not even in the state of Washington, actually in Post Falls, Idaho, we have Lyndon Harriman, the 2018-19 
district governor from District 19E. Uh, two past district governors who left us this year, and I know they're here in spirit. And I'd like to take a moment for everybody to have a moment in silence to remember our district governor, past district 18, and past district governor C.J. Dick Carney from 2003 to 2004. Thank you all. We have a number of zone chairs in the audience. Please wave. I don't want to go through, if we can't go through all of you, please wave if you were a passive zone chair or a current zone chair, and I happen to miss you. Club presidents, club secretaries, everybody wave. Now it is my privilege to introduce our current district governor. Uh, this gentleman, Manny, was actually my zone chair when I was district governor, and he was a zone chair out of District 19 G2. He did a great job, and he has ascended to the ranks of district governor. We have appreciated everything he has done this year. District Governor Doug, you have the microphone. Or with Gusto. Great year we've had. I had a good year. I had an opportunity here just this week to visit my home club, to actually have a face-to-face -face meeting. And I was so excited. They were so excited. I started to talk before I was halfway through. Thank you, District Governor Doug. What a great year. What a great time. Good to hear from you. Uh, check your check your uh, sound. Uh, you've been breaking up a little bit. Maybe it's uh, feedback from Dolly's computer. Is she in the room? She's in. Maybe we're getting some breakup on that. Good. Well, you, we only know when it happens. <laughs> we're all learning as we go through this process. I got a message that our kickoff presenter is not yet here. Is that still the case? No, he's here. He's here. All right. Then we can move on, and uh, I would like to introduce to everybody and recognize uh, our first vice, our second vice district governor from. Unmute. So it's my pleasure today to introduce my friend and my fellows from the state of Delaware. I asked Daniel to send me a brief, short bio uh, to share with you today. You know, Daniel is very humble about his Lions accomplishment, but this was an opportunity then for me to add a little bit to his bio. Lion Daniel Marnie Elkins is a professional drug prevention specialist and community mobilizer who serves as the director of prevention and outreach for the Bellevue. He specializes in creating youth leadership programming by teaching strict and Daniel is one of the founding members of the Lions Virtual Movement and serves as a new club consultant for Lions Clubs International. He serves proudly as the second vice district governor for District 22D in the state of Delaware. And now for the rest of the story. Daniel has been a lion for a little over four years, but in that time, he has joined Lions, formed a new club branch, sponsored over 100 Lions, chartered a new Leo club. Daniel works tirelessly with his Lions and his Leo clubs doing service projects in their community. Daniel's an accomplished storyteller. He's a virtual globe trotter. Our recent LCI telethon was the brainchild of Daniel and a couple other Lion leaders. And of course, Daniel's claim to fame is that he's the trivia master on the Burmester virtual bar every Saturday night. So with that, I present our kickoff speaker, Daniel Marnie Elkins. Well, hello, Lions. It is uh, quite wonderful to be here uh, with you uh, this morning. Uh, is it possible uh, to be able to screen share? 
and I, I have a couple of images. I, I can I can do this uh, without the images, but uh, sometimes uh, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, and I would like to uh, share those thousand words with you all if if possible. But uh, no worries if not. Uh, there we go. There is the power. Uh, so today uh, we will be talking about attracting members in a digital world. There's a lot of talk about the new normal that predates the COVID uh, pandemic. It is a normal in which more and more people are existing in digital spaces, and we as lions need to find a way to have our service and our recruitment efforts enter into those spaces. So as was mentioned, this is who I am. We don't need to cover that. But I do want to say that this is not a lecture. This is a discussion, and even though we might be currently limited by the Zoom box that is, in, uh, you know, encapsulating us now, I do hope that these ideas begin a dialogue and conversation that lasts for the rest of our lives. I would love to hear your perspective on these matters so we can all continually learn from each other. And so when we look at this conversation, there's a changing dynamic in volunteerism when it comes to recruitment. And I'm just going to hit on a couple of these points, and then I will dig deeper into some of these concepts. So traditional recruitment, traditionally recruiting volunteers, uh, general appeal uh, to the public, uh, you, you do uh, cold calling, email blasts, you hang up uh, posters, you put things in the newspaper, and you do word of mouth uh, networking. But in modern uh, recruitment, uh, it, it involves targeted campaigns. It talks about uh, what, it, what is known as the volunteer journey. The ability for someone over the course of their service journey to learn and develop and get professional and personal skills that come along with being a member of the world's largest service organization. It has to do with building a following. And what's a following? Well, on social media, it's the network that you have. The more of a following that you have built, the more your message and information can get out to people who may be potential members. We talk about strategic partnerships, and this is something I'm going to dig into because I truly believe that that is the core for how we can recruit in a, a, a digital era is through uh partnerships. So let's take a look at what it's like in today's day. Volunteering in a digital world. Uh, there's something called episodic volunteering. And this is the more traditional volunteer. It's not necessarily someone who wants to join to be able to be part of every single uh, program or project that occurs over the course of a, a year or two year period. Uh, a lot of people actually just want to join because they have a free Saturday or they have a specific project that they care about that they're willing to help about. When you start to look at recruiting younger generations, this is a term that will often come up when surrounding the conversation of millennials and younger, this episodic volunteering. So how can we, as a Lions Club, enable and empower people to volunteer, even if it's they only have one or two weekends a year that they can participate on something? Is it you connect them to a cause that they're passionate about and then have a year event to be able to bring them in. In order to bring them in, we need to understand them. So an episodic volunteer is defined as an individual who volunteers on a sporadic basis. They provide assistance annually for an event. Uh, these are students seeking you know, real-world experiences. Uh, professionals who provide a project or individuals looking uh, for something to do for just a few hours. And so this is uh, something that in the formation of my club, which is a club that began as a club branch uh, with five members and built its way up to the point where uh, we have, uh, as of today, 122 members. And that is having chartered our own branch club into a new club on top of that since the start of the pandemic 
We have added 25 members in the middle of a global shutdown. How do we do this? Understanding the needs of episodic volunteers and then finding ways to turn those episodic volunteers into periodic volunteers into permanent volunteers. And that is what we do through the process of part of thing. The power of social media. In today's day and age, if you don't exist on social media, you don't exist. And we're talking, trying to recruit the people who are 40 and under. Mm -hmm. These are people who uh, have apps on their phone that the, at the end of the week tell them how much time they have spent staring at their phone screen. And it is literally 15, 16, 17, 18 hours a week staring at their phone screen, looking at their Instagram and their Facebook and their social media. And this is something that if we understand that the story of our service needs to exist in this place and needs to be in such a way that it is engaging, that is inspiring. This is how we can begin to reach other people. But I know, uh, uh, I don't know how to use Facebook. I don't know how to use Twitter. I don't want to. I'm worried that my personal information will be out on the interwebs. I have heard all of these challenges, and it's important for us to understand we must learn to adapt. If you don't know, the thing to do is not to get scared, but to learn. There are examples of people, uh, lions uh, like Lion Richard Stevenson from Arizona, who is a traditional lion when it comes to terms of average age, 68, 70 but yet, uh, he is someone who's adapted, and his club uh, has grown because they've adapted, and they've put their stories of service out there. Now, it's important to understand that when we do this, that we should not just be posting pictures from our dinner meetings. We should be posting pictures of our service. Awards, although it is always wonderful to be recognized for the things that we do, but we should be posting the impact that we have upon our community. And it is through that that we will inspire people to want to be able to join us. And this is part of the rephrase. Now, all of us know that Helen Keller in 1925 stood before Lions Clubs International and asked us of the Lions answered that call, which is why for decades we have served at the highest levels of service surrounding vision impairment. But Helen Keller also has another quote, and it's a quote that I don't think that perhaps we have answered as well as we could. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. What is the together? The together is with our community. The together is in partnership with other organizations because we are not the only association or organization that makes wants to make the world a better place. There are other nonprofits. There are other places of worship. There are other places that we can connect to that will help build our capacity to serve and in doing so be able to bring more members into our association. The together is not just together with other lions. It's together with our communities. And it is my hope that each and every single lion and each and every single lion club in the entire world will answer this call as effectively as they answered the call to become knights of the blind in the crusade against darkness. So when I say partnerships, what do I mean? Well, a partnership can be anything. It can be a connection, a relationship, an alliance, a collaboration, a cooperation, an association, affiliation, a coalition, or a union. A connection of people who share a similar mission. When you think about the mission statement of Lions Clubs International, it is the mission of Lions Clubs International to empower volunteers to meet humanitarian needs, to serve their communities, to encourage peace and promote international understanding through Lions Clubs. Uh, that is uh, a mission that many organizations share. 
So can we identify those and find ways to collaborate with them to better serve our community? Those partnerships that we will increase our visibility in the communities. We will be able to reach a whole new group of people who think that Lions Clubs are the eyeglass and pancake people. That's the reality, that there is a large portion of the population who has a limited perception of who we are because we have specialized in doing specific types of services. But it's through partnerships that we can reach a whole new variety of people. Teamwork makes the dream work. So this is the story of the Belfont Lions. As I said, five members of a club branch and then ended up with 122. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. But how can that be replicated? It's easy. You see, when we started with five members, we sat down and we made a list. We wrote down the names of every single organization within a five to ten mile radius of our community who shared a similar mission. Our mission was that we wanted to serve the youth in the community. And that's what we did. And we wrote down the names of the Boy Scout troops, of the nonprofits, of the churches, of the temples, of the mosques, of all the people who shared similar goals. And then instead of waiting for them to come to us, we went to them. We called them. We asked them when their next event was, and we went and we volunteered for them. We turned their event into our service event by serving, and we didn't tell them who lions were. We showed them. Actions speak louder than words. At the end of each of the times we went and volunteered with another organization in partnership with, they would invariably ask us, who are you people? Well, we're the lions. What do Lions do? Well, we serve. You guys were great volunteers. How can we get you at our next event? Why don't you come to our next meeting and tell us all about it? And we will discuss about how our organizations can work in partnership together. Here's just a quick list of the organizations that the Belfont Lions are partnered with. We have partnered with our county government. We reached out to our Newcastle County uh, Community Outreach Services Department and asked them if they had anything that they were doing serving youth. And they said, yes, we, we have some resources. And we began to volunteer for those resources. And in doing so, we recruited all of the community outreach specialists who work for Newcastle County. We reached out to our local police department and said, uh, what are you trying to do in their community? How can we help? How can we volunteer? Out of that, we ended up forming the Police and Princess Ball. It is a yearly event which empowers young girls within our community. And we ended up recruiting members of that police department. We reached out to our local daycare centers and said, what are your needs? And we told them about the Lions Quest program. And it is through that process that we then got a grant through LCIF to get their daycare center teachers training and access to a curriculum and ended up recruiting those daycare center teachers. We partner with our civic association, our volunteer fire department, our local places of worship. We partner with a local community farm, drug prevention coalitions. We partner with the art museum. We partner with state government, federal government, every single level that we can partner with. And at every single one of those partners, have generated at least one new member, if not more, out of those partnerships. Why? Because our club can do so much more. Alone, we can do so little. Together, as a community, we can do so much. So how do you recreate that in your community? It's all well and good. People come along and say, membership is easy. Just go out and recruit people. Well, what are the steps? What are the processes that makes it a repeatable and replicable process? The foundations to success of this recruitment in, in a digital age is ABCDs, asset-based community development. This is a core theory of doing community development, which is now just being applied to lionism. The foundational truth of asset-based community development is that, one, everyone has gifts. 
Two, everyone has something to contribute. And three, everyone cares about something. And that passion is their reason to act. So you talk to someone, discover what they are passionate about. Are they passionate about boxing? Ask them. I talked to a person who owns a boxing gym. I asked him what he was passionate about. He said he was passionate about teaching boxing. I said, excellent. That's exactly what lions do. And he looked at me and he said, really? And I pulled out a lion's club application. We would love to partner with your boxing gym to teach kids in our community uh, uh, boxing. We have Leos. We'd like to connect them to it. We have a boxing program now. And almost every single service project that we have comes from someone within the community's passion. And that is we've turned their assets into new service projects. We've become adaptable. And in doing so, we've increased our capacity. How do you do this? Every single person has to be considered to be a leader. And take the time to draw out their stories, their experiences, find the things that they care about, and then use that to create new service opportunities for your club. There's a philosophical uh, perspective when it comes to this. It's a needs-based approach versus an asset-based approach. So needs-based focuses on the deficiencies. What's wrong? In doing so, people become the consumers of services, and community members observe as we, the lions, fix their problem. Now, this is the philosophical foundation of the saying, where there's a need, there's a lion. It's looking for the problem that we need to solve. There's a second way of looking at it, and that is looking at a community and looking for the assets. Create that list. What are the assets within your community? How can you use those assets to focus on effectiveness where those people, the community members, become the producers of service and then they actually participate in and are empowered by the service? So I like to update the saying, where there is a need, there is a lion, where there is a partnership and an asset, there is a potential new lion. So let us use partnerships to create a new way of showing. How do you do these ABCDs? It's easy. We're going to form a quick project here. Have uh, your club members or staff at a local church, community center, or school, are they become aware of a local community need or program that lacks volunteers? Do you have a Boy Scout troop that could use an extra hand volunteer center that could use something to read to the children? Do the mapping, create that list, gauge the local interest, see if you have anyone in your club who has a passion that is connected to that. Then build the relationships. Take the interested lions plus community outreach workers, see if there's a local nonprofit who will work together on this partnership. And from that, share the information, tell the story. This is why we need to exist on social media. That is the true, the digital storytelling is what we need to learn how to do. Convene the community surrounding this new project. So support and empower uh, community and youth leadership to help develop and run the program. And then leverage resources. So is it your club being able to donate? Is it that you're willing to help do a fundraiser for a local nonprofit, which they will then be grateful for? Our club has donated this Lionistic Year $64,000 to our local community center. Why? How? We run there every Friday night bingo. The money goes directly to the community center. Our Lions volunteer. That's what helped keep the lights on when everything else shut down. And as a result, I would say close to 80 to 85 percent of the entire community center has now joined our Lions Club because they are so grateful of the service and assistance that we provide. The benefits, well, new service and new Lions Club members have come out of that. All of these things need spaces to be able to pull off. That's an important thing. But any space that your community can gather can be a space a partnership could be built in. It could be the local park. It could be the library. It could be a church. All of these things can be combined to be a place where a partnership can be built and new members could be got. 
The three magic words in which I do everything with are in partnership with. And I do think that that's how we can increase our membership and increase our capacity to serve, even coming out of a pandemic. So as you're doing this, there's just some questions to ask. What can each prospective partner bring to the table? What stakeholders have an interest in forming a partnership? Who might be willing to join your collaboration? And will the community support the partnerships itself? And then are other potential partners willing to share their resource and capacities? And I'm always very aware of time when talking. And I was given a 20-minute window, and it is 19 minutes and 55 seconds. So thank you so much for your time and consideration. And let's work in partnership uh, together to uh, revitalize, re-energize, and reinvigorate our clubs, our districts, and Lions Clubs International as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daniel. We have a couple extra minutes. Um, we're a little ahead of schedule. I had asked for uh, participants to put questions in the chat box, and I don't see any yet. Can I show a video? If then sure. that's the case, yeah. Yeah. I, I did. I did have something that I, I do like like to show. So all of these uh, uh, concepts were actually put into uh, practice um, in just about everything that we do. And I'm just going to jump ahead to this here. Um, so this is a picture of the Wilmington Public Library. And so uh, it was on the list of our places that we had identified as uh, potential uh, partners. And so we reached out to the Wilmington Public Library and I, I just made a phone call. And I ended up talking to a gentleman uh, by the name of Carl Shaw, who was their community outreach a director at the local library. And I said, listen, we, we have volunteers. Uh, do you have any needs for volunteers? Can we uh, assist you in any way? And uh, Carl Shaw said, well, absolutely. We, we've got this thing that we're trying to do called uh, the Barbershop a Book Program, in which we would like to build bookshelves and deliver those bookshelves to all of the barbershops in northern Delaware, in which uh, in this community are like, they're, they're community hubs and networks. People come out and they sit and they talk at the barber shops. And we would like to take books and donate books so those people within those communities can have access to books that they might not otherwise normally have. But we don't have the people to build the books. So I said, you know what? You just tell us what day to show up. We've got you. And we showed up. And uh, this video that you're about to see was not made by us. It was made by the Wilmington uh, Public Library. And it, this is, to me, it sums up all of those things in one of why working in partnership with uh, organizations can help increase uh, your membership. The Wilmington Library would like to thank the Belfont Lions and Leo's Club for coming out to help build the shelves for the Barbershop Books Initiative. And now, Belfont Lions Club President, Daniel Elkins. Uh, the motto of the Lions Club is, uh, we serve. And uh, wherever there's, uh, there is most certainly a need, especially when it comes around to helping uh, develop the youth of Wilmington into being the future leaders of Wilmington. And as someone, myself, while well, growing up, I was always blessed to be in a household that was surrounded by books. Mm -hmm. And that is not uh, the case in most households these days. Mm -hmm. So an initiative like the Bar... into the places where uh, the community members go on a regular basis, I think is an important step in order to help uh, sort of develop the minds of the youth in our city. Belfont Lions Club Secretary, Jessica Graham. The other side to this is that it's actually a lot of fun. Sometimes people think, you know, they sign up to volunteer, they think, oh, it's another commitment, oh, i got to go volunteer, I have to work. But the point is, you get there, and you're like, oh, right, this is actually the highlight of my week. So, yeah, I'm quite remember. It's even better when the youth are actually involved 
in making the difference. Hi, my name is Hanley Wise. I am the Secretary of Youth Club. How I joined um, this community was about when you're now in high school, you have to go to the Shaw, who is on our board of directors now and uh, has helped to create a numerous service projects from that moment. And he had uh, filled out a club application literally at the end of that event. That picture where we're all together, uh, we essentially, our entire board was there. So we approved him uh, basically on the, uh, uh, on the spot uh, and, and inducted him at the next, next meeting. Uh, the other thing is, is always involve the youth. So there was that, you know, young girl, Charnette, uh, Leo Charnette, who is now Leo Lyon uh, Charnette. And she was just on the LCF Campaign 100 telethon. She was uh, inducted by uh, First International Vice President uh, Doug Alexander. And that's, you know, now two or three years after her starting to serve and be involved in partnership with and all of these opportunities. Uh, we are having 18-year-old Lyon. We have partnered with organizations that serve the youth and help support them. And, uh, you know, I couldn't have written a better commercial had I tried. When they say the library and the lions where community happens, uh, we borrowed that tagline for sure. So uh, thank you for allowing me to play that video. Daniel, there was a couple questions. Council Chairman Al Hedstrom is wondering if he can steal oh, your yeah. project. Well, as uh, you know, Council Chairman Al has always says he comes with larceny in his heart. And I know that at any time I come to a meeting that he is at, I am fully expecting anything that's good out of it to be uh, borrowed liberally and be, be reused. That's the, the greatest part about this association that has happened over the last year. The silver cloud, you know, the, the lining to the cloud of this time is the fact that we can share ideas uh, so much easier and borrow them and please, yes, steal them. There were also a couple requests for your PowerPoint. Are you willing to share that? Could you send that maybe uh, to Mark? Uh, uh, that he could yeah, make that available? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I will make that uh, available. I'll send it right after this meeting. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel, for joining our conference. It was wonderful to hear your presentation. And you're an inspire, inspiration to all of the Lions. And so thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Daniel, it was a great presentation. Best of luck to you and your endeavors in Lyons in District. What is it, 22? Is that where you are? District 20. Excellent. We really appreciate your time with us. Next up on the agenda, we have an immediate past district governor. His name is Steve Stottinger. He's from the Fort Vancouver Lions Club down here in Zone G2, and he has some election announcements to make. It's all yours, Steve. No sound, Steve. 
I'm trying to find him. Hang on, Steve. Can you hear? Can you go now, Steve? Yes. You unmuted me. Thanks. All right. Am I on? All right. I am pleased to announce the Lions of District G have voted and have decided on your upcoming district officers for the Lions years of 2021-2022. For district governor, Lions have elected current first vice district governor, Marilyn Patterson, as your district governor for the Lions year 2021-2022. For the position of first vice district governor, the Lions of District G have elected second vice, current second vice district governor, Debbie Mansell, for the Lions year of 2021-2022. And for the position of second vice district governor, the district uh, Lions of District G have, an, have voted and elected current and past zone chair, Leslie Chase, as your second vice district governor for the Lions year of 2021-2022. Now that the election results have been uh, announced and are finalized, I would like to have a motion and a second to destroy all paper and email ballots that I currently have. Do I um, have, do I have a second? We have a motion and a second to destroy all paper and email ballots of this election. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> Any negatives? Any abstain? The votes will now be destroyed. And with that, tomorrow... I will be handing over the ballot registration, whatever you want to call it, box to our current district governor, Doug Harvey. Do that tomorrow on Saturday. Thank you, immediate past council chair, JD. Uh, with that, I am done. Thank you, Steve. Great job. Congratulations, Marilyn, Evie, and Leslie on your elections. Welcome to uh, the new positions and much luck. I want to step back just very briefly. Uh, I missed one of our past district governors in the earlier introductions. And how can I miss the 2000, what was it, 2014-15 district governor from Vader, Washington and the Vader Lions Club, Kathy Crawford. Wave to us all, Kathy. Now, I understand that our uh, executive director from Mobile District 19 is actually down here in the uh, south. Oh, he came on down to do some visiting and so we can attend the festivities tomorrow as well. And it is now time for the roll call of our clubs. And I'm going to let Executive Director Peter Anderson and former Washougal Lion from District 19G uh, to uh, give us the rules on how we're going to be handling the roll call this year. What we are going to be doing, it seems to work fairly well in a normal situation, is... You know, I call out your club, you stand and wave and shout and dance around, and everybody gets excited. Harder to do in this format. So what we're going to do is I'm going to call out your club. You're going to shout it out in chat. But because this is District G and you roar with gusto in this district, we're going to have some noise, and we're just going to take a little extra time, if that's okay, Governor. Can we slide in a little extra time so everybody... They can do it on, rolling it through, but put your name down in the chat. See, your club is here, and you're roaring with gusto. Is that going to work, Mr. Governor? Well, we have the time right now, Peter. We're, we got the time. We're pushing it a right. little bit, so we're running a little bit ahead, because uh, people haven't been as wordy right. as I kind of thought they might. 
Okay. Okay. All right. So then, if I could get a screen share possibility as well, I will do is. All right. All right. If I could find you. So, again. When I call out your club name, I'll go in order from G1 all the way through G6, and everybody else, shout it out, make some noise, and um, where can I get in the screen share? But yeah, I am down here in District G, and my mother-in-law's birthday today, so we're doing a little celebration with that, and I thought I'd come along and say hello to everybody. It does feel like I'm coming home every time I come to District G, so we're good with that. So you can three share now. So let's get the actual sharing that I want to do. And see if this actually works the way I hope it does. All right, are we seeing a little video here? And do we have any noise going with it? There's no no sound. You gotta Not check yet. the. Yep. We'll bail on that idea, and we're just gonna just uh, do some roaring and pesto. So I'm gonna stop the share, and we're gonna we're gonna label this one out, and. So from G1, we have Castle Rock. We have Kalama. How about Kelso? Longview Kelso Early Bird. How about Longview Pioneer? And Peninsula. What? And Wakayakum. And in G2, we've got Battleground. Fort Vancouver. Hazeldell. La Center, North Clark, Orchards Evergreen, Bridgefield, Salmon Creek, Vancouver. How about Vancouver Cascadia and Vancouver Dawn? And in G3, we've got Aberdeen, Central Park, Clearwater Kayla, Cosmopolis, Hoquiam, Ocean Shores, Willapa Harbor. On to G4, we've got Adna, Boyce Fort, Centralia, Morton, Napavine, uh, Rochester, Toledo, and Vader. Winlock. It's going on to G6. Let's hear it from Camus. How about Lyle? How about Skamania County? Washougal. I'm going to say I was there because that was Washougal. White Salmon. From outside of the district. I know we've got uh, 19A, Lynn Valley. Are you here? And 19B, I think we've got somebody from 19B. Uh, which club are you in? Which club are you in? And 19C, moving on, Silverdale Sunrise. And 19D, uh, somebody's here from 19D. Are they not? Did I see them? Which club are you in, Peggy? And Lyndon, which club are you in? How uh, about 19E? Um, are they from 19E? I don't know. F, F. All right, 19 F. Sunny, sunny side, I think it is, right? And 19 H. We got Surrey Central. We've got uh, Mount Shim. And we've got Bellingham Central. And 19 I. I don't think I saw. Oh, wait a minute. I think we did have somebody from Clayholm Bay CQ. Am I right on that? Are they still on board with us? Yes, they are. There they are. Okay. 
Uh, we have Harris Township Lions Club. Are we still on board with anybody else that I've missed? I don't. I don't know. I try to go through everybody. I think I caught everybody. Any club that has not been announced, pop in and say hello. And I think District Governor, there is your roll call for the convention. Roaring with gusto. Thank you, Peter. Good to see you again.